you know, I've missed home. I'm not gonna lie, I've been a little bit homesick. He wrote something about me and was like, you know, Marissa, she claims to be a digital nomad, but at the moment she's in the US. I'm like, wait. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys probably saw the title to this video and were like, what the heck? Digital nomads in America? American digital nomad? Live and work anywhere? I don't get it. I thought being a digital nomad meant living outside of your country and living in some exotic third world country like the Philippines, like Thailand, like Bali, like anywhere in South America. And, and that's exactly why I'm making this video because typically when we think of you know being location independent and working anywhere from anywhere we think about anywhere but America <laughs> and so the reason I wanted to make this video is because at this moment the filming of this video I am in America I am in Arizona and and I'm like you know what why does America not count when it comes to being a digital nomad because in, at this moment it's been nine months since I've returned to the US and in this trip, I've had the greatest time back home. It's been so nice to be home. So in today's video, we will be talking about American digital nomads. So yeah, one of the one of the motivations, one motivational aspects around this video was this one hater I have online. He wrote something about me and was like, you know, Marissa, she claims to be a digital nomad, but at the moment she's in the US. I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, so, I think he's a little bit conflicted on what the definition of a digital nomad is, which means you can live and work from anywhere in the world. And last time I checked, the United States of America is on planet Earth. So I'm like, wait, why <laughs> am I disqualified from being a digital nomad? I'm just explain a little bit more. And it's funny because at that time he said that I was back from Bali, Indonesia, and I was at home for the summer and it was a great time. I was doing my nomad thing in Southern California and here in Phoenix, or specifically in Scottsdale, Arizona. But I, it got me thinking like, why did the digital nomad thing come up? And it, typically we think of places outside of the US and outside you know, some countries in Europe because the cost of living is at least 50% or less in other countries. I mean, come on, I'm paying, when I was in Thailand, I was paying between $300 and $400 for rent. And you know, that was for a one bedroom, one bath, and that included everything, Wi-Fi, you know, everything you need as far as utilities. But there's some people in the US that are American that want this lifestyle. They don't want to change their lifestyle and go to another country and they like it here. And I can definitely, obviously understand why. This video is going to be dedicated to Phoenix, Arizona. When I was here, when I was an engineer, Phoenix was, I lived here for almost seven years and I rage about it. Look at this background, look at this pool. Uh, people from the Midwest and from the East Coast are like, this place is like a vacation. So it feels like you're on vacation. So what we're gonna talk about first is the cost of living. I'm talking about this first because this is probably the number one thing that is not desirable here. It's pretty obvious we go to other countries to save a crap ton of money on the cost of living and so in Scottsdale, Arizona, because that's where I actually lived for seven years, you can expect to pay anywhere from, but around $1,700, anywhere up to $2,200 for an apartment. A friend of mine has an apartment, a two bedroom, two bath. I think they rent it out for $1,500 a month plus utilities, so it really can add up. You guys know it's sweat, it's hot as hell. It's about 100 degrees, maybe 130, I don't know. You can't really tell the difference, but um, no, the cost of living is just not, it's not the greatest. So these condos, for example, example are privately owned and you know the mortgage of these condos ranges anywhere from eighteen hundred to a little over two thousand dollars a month um you know HOA fees utilities and all that stuff so that is what you can expect in Scottsdale Scottsdale and downtown Phoenix are definitely the more desirable areas in the Phoenix Valley. All right, so the lighting is much better when I hold the camera this angle. Sorry, the water is not in the background. The second reason um, which makes Scottsdale and the Phoenix area so desirable is the fact that to start a business entity, it's pretty cheap. So if you wanted to start a, a limited liability corporation or an LLC, Arizona is one of the cheapest states to do it. I think it's less than a hundred bucks to apply and do the paperwork for your LLC. Also, 
um, there's no like annual fees to keep up with the business entity. And so it's really nice and it has a lower tax rate than most states as well. So that is um, one thing that makes it very desirable for you American digital nomads. All right, and so the next category is safety. Now I always talk about safety no matter where I am in the world. Um, you know, Medellin, Colombia, Thailand, uh, Arizona is no different. Is it safe? Yes, I believe it is very safe. I mean, honestly, there's some parts of town such as South Phoenix where you don't you don't really want to go don't really want to hang out but overall I've never felt I've never felt unsafe in the city ever and you know I've had many 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 nights out going out and we'll talk about that later we'll talk about the nightlife but you can walk around in Old Town in any part of Scottsdale really so let's talk about a subject now that is near and dear to my heart and that is of course the internet I mean you can't be a nomad without Wi-Fi and internet and here of course there's nothing that has beaten American internet. I'm not trying to be super biased. I get here to my friend's house and he's like, oh yeah, we got fast internet. Check it out. And I was like, 90 freaking megabytes per second for the upload speed. It was heaven. I mean heaven. I uploaded a video in a matter of eight minutes as opposed to four hours like my apartment situation right now in Medellin. So it's it's pretty phenomenal and there are so many places to work as far as coffee shops, internet cafes. There's this one place I found in Old Town Scottsdale the other day. It's called Schmooze. It's um, it's a new hub spot. It's, it's a new coffee shop, but it's a phenomenal idea. Why didn't I think of it? But essentially it's a, a place to go work, but it has a coffee shop vibe. It's like a Starbucks, but they have meals, like real breakfast, like real lunches you can order. And it's phenomenal. I mean, the internet is super fast. It's a great place to work and collaborate. It's a perfect noise level. It's not like it's super loud. You can get work done. You can focus. I was like, man, they need these schmoozes all over the world. So, all right. So now let's talk about my favorite category on the planet for all my nomad videos. And that is things to do. And let me tell you what makes Arizona so special as a state is it literally has everything you need as far as like beauty and getting outdoors. I mean, we have the desert, the hot desert. We have mountains, there's forests, there's the Grand Canyon, there's snowboarding if you want. So there's literally any type of weather or different type of um, terrain that you're looking for. And that's what's really cool. You can be one day in the mountains of Flagstaff, Arizona, you know, over a mile high, over 7,000 feet. And you could be in that to the Red Rocks in Sedona. So really whatever you are into, you know, any type of outdoors, it's available in the state of Arizona. In the Scottsdale area, there's so much to do in the summer. Yes, it's hot, but there's not a lack of pool parties, whether that's at someone's house, whether that's in downtown Scottsdale at the W Hotel, whatever type of pool party you're looking for, <laughs> it's here. I mean, every single year in the winter, Phoenix hosts the waste management. Uh, it's a PGA tournament, so professional golf. It's in between, you know, watching golfers and a huge party. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I tell this to everybody, people think I'm crazy, but I think Scottsdale has the best nightlife in the world. Why? What makes it better than Vegas? There's way more options. You can club hop throughout the night. Ladies, you do not have to wear fancy dresses and heels to get in and guys you're not going to pay $40, $50 cover at the door to get inside a club. And it's super cool because if you like hip hop, if you like country music, if you like top 40s, any type of music you like, there's pretty much a club for everybody. It's just like a square mile of just clubs and it's awesome. I'm 31 and I'm like, shoot, when am I ever going to stop partying? I don't know. It might not happen. We just partied hard the other night and we'll probably party hard before I head back to Medellin, Colombia. There's tons of hiking. I mean, I myself have hiked all over this Phoenix Valley. I've hiked the Grand Canyon. Um, there's snowboarding. If you're into snowboarding, you can go to Flagstaff. You can go to the east part of the state and enjoy snowboarding. Also, one of my favorite things to do in the summer because it's so damn hot is go to the lake, go paddle boarding. There's not a shortage of lakes, believe it or not. And if you have a boat, take your boat out to the lake. You can do that too. And so um, there's also river rafting, which you wouldn't really expect. Everyone thinks there's like zero water in the state of Arizona. But I love river rafting. It's like my favorite activity to do. You can do it down the Salt River. God, I love it. It's so cheap. It's like 17 bucks to rent a tube like all day long. Um, yeah, it's just things to do is just A plus plus 10 stars. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up because there's sweat all over my body. Ah, 
and you go inside and get some AC. But um, no, I really hope you guys enjoyed this perspective of American Digital Nomad. I'm not really quite sure how many videos out there are out there of American Digital Nomad, but I um, just wanted you guys to see this perspective, see a little bit of my home. And then some other notable states that I've heard that are really good spots for nomads are Florida, Austin, Texas, Dallas, and Washington State. That's just what I've heard from just other nomads that I've came across in other countries outside of the U.S. And also, it's not a state, but the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. I've heard um, Puerto Rico is really great. Uh, it's, you know, the cost of living is a lot less. There's tropical beaches. It's beautiful. So I've heard... I've heard that. I've heard some great things. So anyways, guys, you know what to do if you haven't joined the family already. I talk a lot about online marketing and YouTube marketing, how to exponentially grow your business online through video marketing and um, eventually reach six figures with um, your YouTube business. So if that interests you, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. You know what to do. Give this video a big thumbs up if you got value from it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.